हेलो एवरी वन टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस सम ऑफ द इम्पॉर्टेंट टॉपिक्स इन द फील्ड ऑफ फॉरेंसिक साइंस लेट स्टार्ट विद फ्राई स्टैंडर्ड सो इंट्रोडक्शन द फ्राई स्टैंडर्ड वॉज स्टैब्लिश इन द ईयर नाइनटीन ट्वेंटी थ्री एंड इट इज़ यूज टू डिटरमाइन द एडमिसबिलिटी ऑफ साइंटिफिक एविडेंस इन द कोर्ट एंड अकॉर्डिंग टू दिस स्टैंडर्ड साइंटिफिक एविडेंस मस्ट बी जनरली एक्सेप्टेड बाई द रेलिवेंट साइंटिफिक कम्युनिटी टू बी एडमिसबल so you need to learn the dates because it is very important that is the fry standard was established in the year 1923 second thing which is most important is that it is used to determine the scientific evidence in the court of law is it admissible or not so in this particular standard the most important thing is it de- deals with the scientific evidence and it should be generally accepted by the relevant scientific community so what happened like from where this fry standard has originated so let's learn about its historical background so this fry standard was originated from the famous case as you can see it is mentioned in the slide which is fry versus united state in the year 1923 and this case involved the admissibility of polygraph test as a evidence so what is polygraph test it is nothing it's like lie detector test and it is basically based on this systolic blood pressure and this is it is used as a precursor to the modern polygraph test and it is used to determine the admissibility of polygraph test as evidence and the court ruled that the scientific technique must be generally accepted as i said before the most important part of this standard is that the scientific evidence must be generally accepted by the scientific community to be admissible in the court and the scientific community should be relevant yeah so basically what happened in this case was the court declared uh, that a novel technology must be sufficiently established in order to gain general acceptance in a relevant scientific field to which the evidence belongs to because that polygraph test was rejected by the uh, court because technology at that time did not had that significant general acceptance so under standards which were set by fry a uh, individual or group of experts are not qualified enough to test whether that particular technology is valid or not so the most important that is the special requirement of this price standard is that any particular scientific evidence is only allowed in the court room if that is general generally accepted by the relevant scientific community so from this all summary of this particular case we have learned some of the key points the first one which i have been repeating continuously which is general acceptance within the scientific community the second one is it relies heavily on expert testimony third one is it focuses on the methodology and it is used to obtain the evidence and the third one that is sorry and the fourth one is it is criticized for being too rigid and it excludes new innovative scientific methods now let's learn about its application in the court so it is used to assess whether the scientific evidence presented meets the criteria of general acceptance or not it has just one criteria because that is general acceptance but we will learn further about dobert standard it has at least four to five criteria and it is more flexible okay we'll learn about it now let's focus here its application so it involves the methods involved in the scientific evidences whether it is generally accepted or not an expert witness plays a crucial role in establishing its acceptance now let's let us look into the criticism of fry standard the first one is as it only focuses on the theory of general acceptance so it excludes innovative scientific techniques second one is that it prevents the introduction of valuable evidences it does not provide a clear guideline for judges to assess scientific validity which can lead further to inconsistent ruling across different jurisdictions now let's look into the comparison so we will learn further about dobert standard 2 as you can see in the whole slides we have just learned one thing that is the fry standard focuses on general acceptance and dobert standard was established in the year 1993 and the fry standard was established in the year yeah you should learn that okay it is 1923 and it emphasizes on relevancy and reliability the dobert standard whereas fry standard determines the admissibility of scientific evidence in the court of law and dobert standard is more flexible 
but price standard is like not that flexible because it generally focuses on the theory of general acceptance excluding the innovative modern ideas and dobert standard is more flexible allowing judges to evaluate scientific validity using different criteria which is testability peer review error rates and general acceptance we will learn this further more in detail so let's start with dobert standard so what is dobert standard so introduction dobert standard established in the year 1993 and it is used to determine whether the evidence that is scientific evidence presented is not only relevant but also reliable so it basically focus as i said that the scientific evidence should be reliable as well as relevant and it was established in the year 1993 again i am saying it is very important and it is used to determine whether the scientific evidence is relevant or reliable or not and it should be produced in the court so let's start with again the historical background that from where this robert standard has originated it has originated from the famous case of supreme court case which is uh, dobert versus merrill down pharmaceuticals actually it was this particular case that is this particular standard was originated in the year 1993 and this case involved the admissibility of expert testimony regarding the drug which is benedictine it is an uh, anti nausea drug and it was used it was claimed that the pregnant woman took that particular drug and their child were born with serious birth defect so what is this benedictine so this benedictine is basically a anti nausea drug and it is used like the combination are dicyclamine hydrochloride and deoxylamine succinate and it is a tetrahydrogenic and it was claimed that it was produced by merrill down pharmaceuticals company but later on their experts submitted documents and no such scientific study demonstrated that there was a link between their benedictine and birth defects so supreme court as a result said that in uh, expert testimony in the court of law should be like following the given criteria so let's see the first one was the empirical testability of a particular scientific theory or a technique second one was the study or theory which has been subjected should be peer reviewed or published the third one was the acceptance of known or potential rate of error of theory or technique and existence and maintenance of standard and the last one same as the uh, fry standard uh, it was like the general acceptance of theory or technique in a scientific community so let's discuss its application too so it is used to evaluate whether expert testimony presented is based on scientifically valid reasons and methodology or not and in this particular standard the judges act as gatekeepers and ensure that the evidence meet the required standards so its impact on the legal proceedings so this dobert standard has shifted the responsibility of evaluating scientific evidence to the judges and it led more rigorous scrutiny of expert testimony influencing the way of scientific evidence is presented in court like nowadays dobert standard is more flexible as compared to fry standard as it has several criteria unlike fry standard as it focuses only on the theory of general acceptance whereas dobert standard focuses on uh, many things together like testability peer review error rates general acceptance these all are the criteria in order to evaluate the scientific validity so nowadays dobert standard is more acceptable in the society now let's discuss its comparison i already said but again let's go through it the fry standard focuses on general acceptance the dobert standard emphasizes the reliability and relevance of scientific evidences and the Dob- uh, dobert standard as i said it is more broader and more flexible as compared to fry standard and it is based on expert testimony it is important you need to learn this is a key word expert testimony so now let's start with bprd so you should learn the full form that is bureau of police research and development let's start with its introduction the bprd was established in year 1970 you need to learn this date also till now we have learned three dates the fry standard which was established in the year 1923 
द डॉबर्ट स्टैंडर्ड विच वॉज स्टैब्लिश इन द ईयर नाइनटीन नाइन्टी थ्री एंड दिस बी पी आर डी विच इज मैंशन इन दिस स्लाइड इट सेल्फ नाइनटीन सेवेंटी सो यू नीड टू लर्न दिस डेट्स सो दिस बी पी आर डी वॉज अंडर मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ होम अफेयर्स गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया एंड इट्स ऑब्जेक्टिव वॉज टू मॉडर्नाइज द पुलिस फोर्सेज इन इंडिया इन ऑर्डर टू प्रमोट एक्सीलेंस इन पॉलिसिंग थ्रू रिसर्च एंड डेवलपमेंट सो लेट्स सी इट्स मिशन एंड विजन सो इट्स मिशन वॉज टू प्रमोट एक्सीलेंस इन पॉलिसिंग बाई कंडक्टिंग रिसर्च डेवलपिंग पॉलिसीज एंड इम्प्लीमेंटिंग इनोवेटिव स्ट्रैटेजी एंड द विजन इज टू लीड ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इन पॉलिसिंग रिसर्च एंड डेवलपमेंट ड्राइविंग कंटिन्यूस इम्प्रूवमेंट एंड मॉडर्नाइजेशन इन लॉ इन्फोर्समेंट नाउ लेट सी इट्स की फंक्शन फर्स्ट वन इज रिसर्च एंड डेवलपमेंट सो इट कंडक्ट रिसर्च ऑन पुलिस रिलेटेड इशूज एंड डेवलप न्यू मेथोडोलॉजीज सो बेसिकली वॉट हैपन इज दैट इन दिस रिसर्च डिविजन लाइक देर इज अ डिविजन टू दैट इज रिसर्च डिविजन द एनालिसिस एंड स्टडी ऑफ क्राइम प्रॉब्लम्स ऑफ जनरल नेचर अफेक्टिंग द पुलिस आर एनालाइज एंड असिस्टेंट ऑफ पुलिस रिसर्च प्रोग्राम्स आर ऑल्सो देयर दे पार्टिसिपेट इन सोशल डिफेंस एंड क्राइम प्रिवेंशन प्रोग्राम दे रिव्यू द प्रोग्राम ऑफ वेरियस टाइप ऑफ इक्विपमेंट्स एंड द इक्विपमेंट यूज इन देयर पुलिस फोर्सेज सो इट्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इन ऑर्डर टू डिटरमाइन द पुलिस रिलेटेड इशूज एंड टू डेवलप द न्यू मेथड्स टू इम्प्रोवाइज द पुलिस फोर्सेज द सेकेंड वन इज ट्रेनिंग सो दे ऑर्गेनाइज वेरियस ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम्स फॉर पुलिस to enhance their skills and knowledge uh, and the programs are related to like crime investigation forensic science human rights community policing and it collaborates also with international organization so that it incorporate global best practices in training and the third one is modernization so it implement modernization initiative to improve police infrastructure and technology as you know that modern modernization is very important because it plays a crucial role like for upgradation of police infrastructure for introduction of advanced technology and equipment and basically it promotes the use of digital tool in order to gain a better efficiency and this initiative aims to improve the overall effectiveness and responsiveness of the police now let's see the policy formulation so it is like assisting in the formulation of policies related to police and law enforcement because if we see the findings which are published in reports and journals and other publication then their output provide the valuable insight recommendation for policy formation in order to improve in policy making so now let's see the summary of the whole in whatever we have discussed yet that is the fry standard you need to learn the important dates that is 1923 the famous case and it is like generally accepted which is a key point and most important uh, area it determines the basically the admissibility of evidences the second one is robert standard which is 1993 you need to learn about benedictine and other stuffs which we discussed and it is basically based on the expert testimony and the criteria also are also very important uh, yes now last one which we discussed was pp bprd you need to learn the full form it was established in the year 1970 you need to learn that also it is very important its initiatives and the functions which we discussed that is research and development and training modernization policy formulation you need to just learn the key points and its mission also and vision also mission uh, we can recall it mission was to promote excellence in policing by conducting research and to develop policies and the implementing innovative strategies and the vision is to be the leading organization in police research and development for driving continuous improvement and modern modernization in law enforcement so these are also important and the various key functions which we discussed the divisions of bprd which is training division research division yeah that's it thank you